Hey what's up everyone, welcome back to a new video here on the channel. So in today's video, I will be doing the part two of our new SEO uh, series on Wix. So this will be a, a, the part where we talk more about the content, so how to optimize your content, how to think about your content, uh, and more kind of that way. So that's kind of where we're uh, going with this video. And I will also try to make this video without doing a single edit to this whole video. So let's see how that goes. Um, the video sh was supposed to come out last week, uh, but I had COVID and I'm still a bit sick. You can probably see it in my eyes. Uh, but with that being said, let's just jump into the video. So let me remove my screen real quick, or I could just be in the corner. That's, that's fine as well. So what we'll be doing in today's video is essentially look at how we can optimize our on-page content on Wix. If you watched the first video, we went through some of the more basic behind the scenes settings. So setting up your title tags, your meta description, I think structured data, I believe we covered that as well. And then some additional elements as well. Uh, so in this video, we're talking about more about the actual content on your pages. So we'll be doing one example. If you watched the first video, which I do recommend you to watch, go back and watch it. We started working on a coffee shop. So basically we have a coffee shop as an example in this video. And that's basically what we're basing it off. Now, this example can be used across any industry. So even though you're in a totally different industry or if you're running a totally different business, the process I'm using can be replicated for any type of business. So it doesn't really matter. So just use it as an example. And then obviously don't use the text that I'm using and use the keywords that I'm using. Make sure that it's relevant uh, to your business. But with that being said, uh, the page that we're optimizing today or just giving some examples on will be the homepage of our website. So I'm currently in the Wix editor and this is the homepage of my website or the example website. On this page, we have a couple of things right here. We have two titles here at the top. We have the banner, uh, which is a slide slideshow banner uh, with a bunch of different images on it. Then we have some additional content on the page and some images. We have an image, we have some titles, we have some paragraph text, and then we have some more titles. It kind of looks the same all the way down. And then at the bottom, we have another image and just a simple footer down here. Cool. Now, uh, the first thing I want to do here is just make sure that we're following the proper HTML structure on this page. So what we want here is that you want the first heading on your page to be an H1. And you only want to have one H1 on each individual page on your website. The H1 tag will essentially tell Google, okay, this is the main topic of this individual page. So if you have one page, the home page, for example, you might want to rank for a specific keyword. Obviously, you want to make sure that is included in the H1 title, which will cover um, or should be the most important thing for that specific page. Then we have other pages on our website as well. So we have our shop, for example, menu, buy coffee. We'll have other keywords which are more important for those specific pages. Same, same would be for your business as well. If you're a painter and you're offering a specific type of Let's say you're doing full house painting, like outside painting, then that would be one page where you explain that service. And then obviously you want some keywords which are related, related to like full house painting. Now, I'm not sure what you would call it uh, in those terms. And then you also have like inside painting. So that might be another one. Uh, and then if you're a carpenter, you will have different types of carpets or whatever carpeting services. So all of that will be under different pages in an ideal scenario because if someone is looking for a specific service and they're Googling it, they want to make sure that the user lands on a page which is relevant to what they're searching for. Because if you have a page which is talking about a bunch of different services that you're offering, you can be like, oh, I'm offering this, 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 this. Not all of it will be relevant to that specific user. So you wanna make sure that it's relevant to the user and to that specific topic. So Google also can understand, okay, this page is about this topic. It's not about 20 different topics. So you just make sure that you're kind of following that structure throughout your website. Now, with that being said, let's just jump into the titles. Uh, we have a text here at the top. I think this will just be a text. What you can do is you click on it, click on the edit text, and then we can scroll down and choose our HTML tag. And this will just be a P, which is normal text. That's fine. The next one will be our heading on this page. And this is currently an H2 heading. We want to change this to an H1 because we want the first heading 
on our page to be our h1 so i'm just going to change this to h1 here and I choose html tag and then you can just change it like that then we want to change this tag so i have some tags prepared who is bob and coffee shop it's going to be our h1 title so i'm just going to copy this over and just paste it in here so we get the proper formatting then i'll just paste it in here it might not look perfect we can resize it if we want to or we can try to fix it i mean we can who is bob and we could change our name. I mean, the name is not ideal in this scenario. In this case, your name would probably be shorter in this case, uh, but you can obviously also do some redesign as well, just to make sure that it looks a bit better. So we can align it like that. And I think that's, that's, that's totally fine. So now we have who is Bobbin, which if you're a business, local business, people are going to search your name as well. When you're just starting out, not a lot of people will be searching your name, but eventually when people are searching your name, you want to make sure that your homepage and your website is actually ranking for your business name. So this is important that, or generally you want your business name in, in the header uh, of your, um, or in the, in, in the heading of your homepage, uh, because obviously that is also part of your branding as well. Cool. Then we also have coffee shop, which is good. We cannot create that relevance to coffee shop. Now, coffee shop is very broad. We don't want to rank for coffee shop, although it would be good to rank for coffee shop, but we want to rank for the local searches. So when people are searching for our coffee shop in downtown Brooklyn, which is also the main keyword of our title tag, we have it in our title tag already. You can see it here at the top. So coffee shop, downtown Brooklyn, that's our main keyword for this page. You could try to include it here in the title, but you don't necessarily have to include the full keyword because we're kind of, we're, go, we're going to build up the relevance with downtown Brooklyn throughout the page in the content as well. So you don't have to have the exact keyword, although it could be beneficial to do so as well. Now jumping down, we have the second piece of this page. We have this image right here, which I'm actually going to change. So I have some images already prepared. So I have these images here. So I want to make sure I use these images. In an ideal scenario, you probably have your own images of your coffee shop or your business. Use those. Hire a professional photographer and get your own images. Will just make your website look better and make it look more trustable. If you're using stock images, it's easy to notice, easy to spot. Not for everyone, but generally you can be like, oh, I've seen that image on a hundred different websites and it's on your website as well. Important part when you get these images, you wanna make sure that you include relevant keywords in the images as well, because your images will also rank in Google. So when people are searching for coffee shop downtown Brooklyn, because let's pretend this image here is of our coffee shop in downtown Brooklyn, and people go to images, they are gonna see our images because Google will also pick that up and be like, okay, this na the name of this image is actually downtown Brooklyn. So that adds that relevance. So what I'll do here is actually rename this file real quick to coffee shop. We can have an, even add our business name, so which is gonna be who is Bobbin and uh, coffee shop downtown Brooklyn. Perfect. So that's our first image. Then we have some more images here as well, which we can try to yield target in different ways. Uh, so this one, let's say this is just a picture of the coffee shop from the outside. So it just might be who is Bobbin. Then the, then the third image here, uh, I'm just gonna name this coffee shop Brooklyn. Now you can see that all of these are relevant they're relevant to the page that we're putting on the name of the images are relevant as well um so it all makes sense for this specific page so what i'm gonna do is start off by changing this image here hopefully i don't have to make a lot of changes in terms of the design if i have to i'll probably just skip this part but you probably know how to add images at this point you can just drag and drop it right in like that now i didn't compress this image wix does it automatically uh, I'm not sure how good they are at compressing your images, but you want to make sure that the images you're using are the right dimensions for where you put it on the website. So let me give you an example. This image here is fairly big, but if I copy this or duplicate this, and let's say you have an image on your website, which is this size, for example, ideally the dimensions of the original image file should be similar to what it actually looks like on the website. 
Because if you have an image like this one and it's 19, 20, 10, 80, for example, that will make the image a lot bigger in terms of size and that will make your website slower. So you cannot try to optimize uh, the size of your images according to how it actually is presented on the page itself. Now, if you look at the top here, we have images which are pretty big, but if you, may, if you add images here, which are, I don't know, 200 by 200 pixels, they will be very pixelated on the website because they're so big on the website as well. So you kind of have to optimize here. Make sure that you have the right size for your images. And if they're very small on the website, make sure using the smaller versions just to save some of that extra space and speed up your website as well. Now that kind of doesn't touch on content, but I'll just mention it anyway. Now we have the image here on the website. We have some additional things we want to change with it. So we, what we can do is just click on it. And then we have the settings here. So we can open up the settings and then we have the image tag. So what is in this image? Tell Google, this will be your alt tag for this image. It will essentially be the same as what we did for uh, the name of the file as well. As you can see, it already picked it up from the name file. So we already have who is Bob and coffee shop downtown Brooklyn. So that's all fine. We don't have to do anything. Saves you some time as well. But make sure you go in and check this as well, because in some cases, if you uploaded some pictures in the past, you might not have changed uh, the, the image file itself or the name. Uh, so make sure you go in here and update this text as well. Once that is done, we have some additional text here as well. So we just gonna, I'm just gonna open up my content or the file that I have. So I have some text here. I'm just gonna copy all of this. And then what I'll do is, let's see if we can copy it straight over or if we'll, change the the sign no it's fine cool now i do see that we have some spelling mistakes luckily i have grammarly so we can fix this real quick perfect if you don't have grammarly i recommend you to get it just want to make sure we space this out like i had it in the document i think that's correct perfect now what did i do here in the text in the text i'm talking about my business like you would do on your home page and I've also added in some of the keywords that we want this page to rank for. We have the name of our business, which is a keyword I want this page to rank for. I have coffee shop, downtown Brooklyn. So we also have coffee shop. We have downtown Brooklyn. So we have both of those. So we make the relevancy here. Uh, going down, we have some more text just about coffee. Also adding up that relevance to the page itself. And then throughout the text, downtown Brooklyn cafe, for example, is something that, that I've added in. If you want to, you can also make it bold just to make it stand out like that. You don't have to do it, but obviously if you want to, you can. And then you have downtown Brooklyn cafe. We can highlight that. And then if you want to highlight this, I think it just makes the text look a bit better as well. If you just highlight some of the uh, main points of the text. Anyway, perfect. So that's the point of our text. We have some good content, which is relevant to the page. And then we add some of our main keywords within this specific page. Now you will have your main, you will have your main keyword for the page for, in our case, downtown uh, coffee shop, down, down, uh, coffee shop, downtown Brooklyn. Um, we also have some additional keywords as well. So your main keyword might be the one which is the most competitive, but it also has the highest search vo volume, for example. But you also want to make sure that you add some additional keywords on here, which is relevant to coffee shop downtown Brooklyn, such as I did with downtown Brooklyn cafe, for example. They are related, but they are two different keywords which people will search. And you want to make sure that you add some of those additional smaller keywords or keywords with less search volume onto your page as well. Now we haven't updated the title here, so we were just gonna go through, edit the text, make sure we have the right HTML structure. I'm gonna change this to a P, that's fine. Then for the title here, we wanna make sure this is an H2 title. If I didn't explain it previously, so we have the H1 title at the top, main title, followed by an H2 title, like in this case. Now, if I wanted to add an additional title within here, for example, if I wanted to split up the text, let's say here, and I want to have another title here, this right here would be our H3 title, right? Because it goes under the H2 title, and then we divide it into an H3 because it's related to the H2 title. 
Now, if we go back down, this one would still go back to an H2 title. And then if you add another uh, heading under this one, that would obviously go as an H3. And if you add another heading under the H3 title, you can make it an H4. So you can see how you have to kind of like structure uh, your headings throughout the page. What I'll do is just remove these right here. Perfect. So now we want to make sure we update this title. I have an H2 title for us here. Truly the best coffee in downtown Brooklyn. So let me just copy this over and then just paste this in. I think it'll be a bit big. Uh, we might have to move some stuff here. So let me actually move this up a little bit. And then we might want to move this image like that. I think that's perfect. Cool. So now we have uh, truly the best coffee shop in downtown Brooklyn. Best coffee, or uh, best coffee in downtown Brooklyn. Uh, we can also make this the best coffee shop in downtown Brooklyn as well. So obviously just still just adding the relevance. Now going down, you would repeat the same process if you have more content to add to these pages. Obviously what I would recommend you to do is search your keyword in Google, your main keyword, and look at what your competitors are doing. Are your competitors writing 2000 words? How relevant is the content? What type of content do they have? Do they have a lot of images on their pages? Because they are ranking number one for a reason, because they have the most relevant content on their pages and users are clicking on their pages or on their page and staying on it the longest. So you wanna make sure that you actually go on those pages, do a lot of research, like how can I structure my page and how can I make my page better than theirs? So that's how you want to make sure you do your research beforehand, because then you will know kind of what you actually have to do on this specific page. Now, I don't have any other content to add on here in my example, because I'm not going to sit here and write and bore you with all of my writing. But what we're going to do is actually just finish off by updating these images. So I'm just going to click on change image right here. We can go back up. We have our second image. I'm just going to drag and drop it here. We can actually upload both at the same time. So we have both of them done. So this is this one, I'm just gonna change the image. And as I already did, I changed the file name. We already have our alt tag implemented directly, so we don't have to do anything. I'll just keep going down and we can change this image as well to this one, perfect, choose the image. Now that we have our page pretty much done, obviously you wanna make sure you add this additional content as well. Some additional things you can do, or that is very important for your page in general, especially if you have a lot of different pages on your website, is they wanna make sure you link to those pages from your text or within your text. So if you have a lot of pages, you wanna make sure that people can easily find them, but also that search engines such as Google can, when they come on your website and start crawling your website, they can find those additional pages as well. But you wanna do it in the right way. So what you can do is essentially make sure that you link within your body text in the or on the page itself. So in this case, if we have a page which is talking about certified organic coffee or certified organic coffee beans, perhaps we're selling these certified organic coffee beans from our coffee shop and we have a product page for the certified organic coffee beans, we wanna make sure that our page is ranking for that keyword. So if we link within this text, add a link here and then we link to, let's say this is our product page that we want to link to. And we wanna make sure we link in the current window because it's the same page like that. Now when Google goes on our website, we will essentially be able to crawl this easily. It will scan the text and the anchor link as you call it um, and understand, okay, this page that we're linking from within the text is about certified organic coffee beans. So that adds that additional context for Google to understand, okay, it's linking with this specific text and the page is about this. So it kind of adds that relevance between the link itself and the page itself. So you wanna make sure you add this throughout your content as well. Obviously don't overdo it and don't only use your targeted keywords. You can, sometimes you might have to use click here or read more or whatever it is in a more natural way. So you don't wanna overdo it, but You've probably seen this in newspapers or other pages on the internet. It's very common to do. 
And it is just for that reason. You wanna add that additional context for uh, search engines as well as users, because you, you kinda wanna know what you're clicking on before you click it. So that is something very important that you actually add into your content. Once that is done, our page is pretty much done. The only thing I would add right here at the bottom, if I was a local shop, if you're now, if you're just doing online or you doesn't, if you don't do anything uh, locally, or if you don't have like an actual physical store, uh, you don't have to do this. So you can end this video here. Uh, but the last thing I would like to do is add a Google Maps in here as well. And you can also link that to your Google My Business just to add that extra relevance as well. Now let's see where we have the Google one. I think it will be under contact perhaps. Uh, let's see here, booking store. Let's see, I think it's under here. Maps, yeah, here we go. Cool, so you can add one here that fits your design. See if we have something that's relevant to our design. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this video to be honest, I'm just gonna click something, let's see here. Uh, black and white, fine, cool. So we might wanna add this directly here on top. I'm not gonna do the whole design here, but I'm gonna make it like this. Actually, that's on top of something. Let me make it smaller. Um, perfect, cool. Then what you would do is essentially just go on manage locations, add your location in here. Now I don't have any location in downtown Brooklyn. Uh, I wish I had a coffee shop there, that would be cool. But now what you would do is just essentially Manage locations, add your location uh, to where your physical store is, and that would add that additional uh, relevancy to your local area as well. So Google can kind of see, okay, it actually is in this specific area. And it also makes it easier for people who actually want to come to your store to actually find it as well. I think that will be it for today's video. Uh, that is going to be all. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy. This is essentially the part two. Uh, we'll have a part three of this as well. Where we'll be going through, I think, some more technical stuff. Perhaps some of the more uh, speed side and what we can do in it more. Uh, maybe we'll actually set up our Google search console. We haven't done that. Uh, Google Analytics is also cool. So I'm not entirely sure what we'll be doing in the part three of this video. If you have any recommendations or if you have any requests, you can put them in the comments down below. And you're also welcome to join our Discord channel. It's completely free to join. Uh, people from all over are joining the channel. You can essentially just chat with other people and ask questions. Uh, I'm trying to make it a bit of a more interactive way to talk to everyone on the channel. Now, with that being said, once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the very next video.